Good morning, walkers. Welcome back. And this is Alan. Good morning. Hey. Warm dia. Warm dia. And we have little Greer down here. Hi, Greer. Say hi, Greer. Hey, how are we doing? <laughs> looking a little warm. Yeah. yeah. It is a little warm today. We're here in Madeira. I suppose the question might be then, it's like, why did you pick Madeira as a place to hang your hat, as it were? Well, uh, there's several, but some of the most important was it's safe. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It has mountains and it has ocean. And those are things that are all pretty dear to us. So we oh. narrowed it down. Those are some of the main ones. There's lots of other ones, but okay. that did it for us. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can, yeah, I can empathize with all of those. And did you, was it kind of like, did you go on a hunt? Were you we trying did. lots of different we, countries? Well, we did. We, well, we tried USA at first. We, we scoped out lots of places in the U.S. where we thought we could afford to, to retire. And a lot of them were beautiful, but they were either too hot, too cold, too humid many people something it just wasn't the right fit we tried Mexico um, we tried um, some places in the Caribbean uh, Ireland was nice but it's expensive mm. yeah we, we we scoped out lots of different places and, and and ended up here we we did our first scouting trip last summer we spent five weeks here um, to see if it was a good fit and we knew I'm not single scouting trip that this was the place so you've only been here a year then really we yeah and then we went back home and got our affairs in order sold the house and came here on the first of november of last year wow oh wow and so was there was there kind of like one thing in particular that sort of like set this as the place or was it just a whole bunch of things it was it was several things it's not one thing in particular but the people are marvelous here yeah. Um, the scenery is spectacular, and you can go from Nassau to the top of the highest mountain here in an hour. <laughs> wow. So, it's... I do remember that. I remember, like, I mean, we've been coming here, I think the first time was probably 20 years ago, and I remember one trip, we took our bus up to, um, right, right on top of one of the peaks, there's a nice house. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you've been up there, and when we went up there, there was snow. And so yeah. we got off in snow and we were trekking down a Levada and came down and, you know, we got part way down the island and took a bus down the bottom. And then down the bottom, we were in t-shirts and shorts kind of thing. You know, it's... Uh, it's An hour a, later. That's just an amazing, isn't it? It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely incredible. So here's something. I'm just going to point this out to a few people. It's just that... Um, so generally, there are a couple of um, sand beaches on the island. There's a couple of beaches that are imported sand that comes over from Morocco I think but we have some black sand beaches here and here of course actually around from Chal uh, we have more stony beaches but as you can see the the locals pile in um, and it's really quite exciting if you get a chance to swim off here and obviously this is a good place in the Lido to catch all the water sports mm -hmm. so we're just gonna head off a little it's kind of interesting then, isn't it? Because, I mean, I've, well, I've been to the States myself um, only for a few weeks, I guess. So I, I can't really say I know the States, but even coming from the, the UK um, and then, you know, spending a lot of time here, there are some differences, aren't there? And Yeah, I mean, they don't... If you're looking for a big, wide, white sand beach, you're not going to find it here. You can go to Porto Santo, the sister island of Madeira, it's a two and a half hour ferry ride on the north side, and they have a fabulous golden sand seven mile long beach. Oh, wow. So you can see things like that, hmm. just, just not on this island, but it's very close. But what about in terms of then just like, how does it feel in terms of everyday life here? What, what would you say has been the biggest changes for you? Well, I can say one of the most pleasant things that we no longer have an alarm clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we get up when we feel like it. But with a dog, it's usually early, so. Okay. Uh, let me should wander this way. Sure. It's quite nice. You can see one of the, uh, it's a nice pizzeria along here. It's probably not open yet. Yeah, and I suppose it's that, it's that 
and partly it's a, down to sort of retirement because you've you've taken retirement. Yeah, now, I did so retire yeah. last October, so that's why I don't have to play with the alarm clock anymore. But life's a lot slower flat paced now. It just yeah. you, you do things at your leisure. You, you try to plan ahead. You try to spend your time wisely. But there's so many things different to do here all the time. So it's never boring. And for us too, it's sort of I think it's, there is there is something here, especially also when if you're able if you're able to spend more time in a country, then we've discovered that you know we can well, we just we just spend less time sort of planning. We might have one thing each day that maybe we plan to do that's a little different. Maybe somewhere that we haven't been before, or maybe it's to go somewhere for a sea swim, or we're going to meet someone like yourself. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the time, it's just, you know what? It's just, you can't go wrong. Just having a walk, having a little chat with somebody, getting a coffee. Um, Watching the sunrise. Yeah. You know, and here in Funchal, you've got one of the Levadas just above us. It's, uh, it's Again, we've done a few walks along there. But, you know, you can get out into the banana plantations really quickly here within oh, yeah. half an hour's walk. So one thing then, I mean, talk about getting out and about. I guess kind of like you, you're you kind of quite well known for your car. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that was a that was an interesting affair. It took a lot of. A lot of time to get that thing here. It has a lot of legal loopholes, but it finally made it. We tried to get it in December, and it finally got here in May. So, but it was worth the wait. It's a car that I've had for almost 30 years, so it was quite special to me. And I want it was. I knew it would be perfect for the island, and it has been so far. So, and it's just for use. And it's a VW Beetle, right? Yeah, it's just a plain 1970 Volkswagen Beetle. It is the the US spec, so it has the 1.6 liter engine. Has a little bit more power than the 1.3 liter European spec car. Oh, so okay. it gets up and down the hills a little better. Because we used to have, so I mean, actually our second car was a Beetle. Our first, our first vehicle was a, was a camper. Uh -huh. Like, you know, because we were, <laughs> yeah, into VWs at the time. Um, I do remember really enjoying it. Um, it this way. But I do, I think I said to you before as well, that I guess it's something that we could have had actually fixed, mm -hmm. but the thing we had with ours was that we just couldn't turn the heating off. <laughs> ah. So it's kind of like, okay, it's probably something quite easy to fix. But um, I think also at the time we were, uh, my dad was retiring and we thought, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to give away my car. We said, well, okay, actually, you know, kind of the idea of actual air conditioning in a vehicle actually sounds interesting. <laughs> and, I mean, Creature boy, comforts. Yeah. Well, it was, I mean, you know, we did miss. There's a certain feel, isn't there? I mean, I remember with the with the camper. If you pulled up in a car park or in a in a field, and there were other VW campers there, you'd all have a little wave. A camaraderie. Yep. Yeah, we'd all pass each other on the road. You'd give each other a little toot. Yep. Um, that doesn't happen with other cars, does it? Really? No, I mean, not really. No, no, I do get honked at quite a bit here. <laughs> Hopefully that's good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no it's, it's a good honk. It's Hopefully. a toot, not a, not a whine. Well, you've got the advantage too that in the states, obviously, you're, you're driving on, what we say, the right side of the road, which is right. the right side of the road. Uh, on the UK, we have to be a little bit different. We have to go on the left. Yes. So I think that's yeah. It took me a little while to get used to. Yeah, that's a constant challenge when I go there. It's like, okay, we're coming up to an intersection. Which way do I go? Oh yeah. <laughs> And, and roundabouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's they're bad enough sometimes for us. I mean, uh, yeah, and actually, I, I find that sometimes too. If I've driven, say, in Portugal or somewhere, and I'm used to roundabouts in one direction, I go to the UK. I, uh, you know, the first few days, I'm sort of stopping, thinking, oh, hang on. You kind of paying pay yeah. attention to what everybody else is doing, and hopefully they're doing it right, and you follow them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Do I go left or go right? I don't, I don't know. No idea. <laughs> No, I'm mad. I think though that um, I mean, so we've managed pretty well without a car here. Uh, we normally use public transport, and that's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I, one thing I like about your videos, though, is that you you really make use of that car, don't you? And you, you you've got to a lot of places. I think that maybe 
it's quite difficult to get to. Yeah, I people. drive I drive the wheels off that car. <laughs> so wow. we we go to we try to pick different places all the time, and um, so far the Volkswagen's done it mark done done a pretty good job there's a couple of hills that i had to drop down a few gears to get up the hill but it, it got up the hill no problem yeah the hills are uh <laughs> are something special here aren't they yeah. yeah you know you're in trouble when you see the sideways crotch hatch on the on the road so you can get traction <laughs> to go up that's that's a pretty steep hill <laughs> yeah so if you're coming here and you're planning to hire a car um practice your clutch control i'd say at home you know Practice your hill starts. Because uh, also, I mean, again, I mean, we've not we've not hired a car, I'm not bothered, but probably will next time. But I don't think they really do automatics here that much, do they? No, they don't. But they do have a nice feature that I'm not aware of. That back in the states, it, maybe they do. But it's the roll control. So when you pull up and you're on a hill at, at a stop for about three seconds after you let off the brake, it'll hold so you can take off. Oh. It won't roll backwards. Oh, all That's right. a really nice feature. Oh, okay. I've not heard of that. Oh, that would be quite handy. Yes. Yeah. So you're not backing into the guy right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'm thinking of like, well, you know, I remember, yeah, but, you know, I learned to drive in London, which is, uh, in, in hindsight, a really good place to learn. Because mm -hmm. if you can deal with London, you can deal with anywhere. And yeah, hill starts where I used to live were a common feature. Yeah. So, so having a car then, you know, are there a couple of places that you kind of recommend to like, okay, if it's worth, if you could hire a car for a couple of days? Um, yeah, there's, well, you have to go to Ribera Brava and then go north. That's a beautiful drive up to um, Sal, uh, Sal Vincent, uh -huh. up to the north side. Sorry. Oh, there's uh, a little it's okay. dog friendliness happening. <laughs> Come on, Greer. It's okay. Oh, um, yeah, there's place. there's so many places. Uh, the, the popular places on the southwest side, uh, uh, Madalena du Mar, uh, Pau du Mar. Um, oh, yeah. uh, so, because we've not been through those two places, so how, how would you characterize them? Are they just like a small village? They're, yeah, they're small seafront villages that, you know, some of them are hard to get down to, a little switchback road to get down to the beach where the um, little communities are. But once you get down there, they're beautiful. They're spread out. A couple of them are known for surfing, so you encounter surfers down there, windsurfing. Uh, they're just beautiful and quaint little restaurants and coffee shops to visit. It's it's very relaxing and they're small. They're, none of them are like bigger than 5,000 people and that's a big one. Uh, There's a couple of them that have like 500 people, <laughs> which suits me fine. Well, yeah. Well, this is a great thing, isn't it, really? And no matter how much time you kind of spend here, you look at a map or you start talking to people and going, oh, we were here last weekend. You go, I've never heard of that. Where is that? <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, zoom in on the map and it's this little bitty place, but yeah. absolutely full of charm. Yep. And then on the north side, you've got... Um, Ponta Delgada is really nice. Um, Boa Ventura, Santana. You get to go there to see the famous little triangular-shaped houses that are that Santana is known for. The, the, yeah. the earliest people came to live in. Yeah. And the ones they've got there in Santana. I mean, they're. I mean, I'm guessing they're the original Alaska, aren't they? I mean, they're not just put there for tourists. I'm guessing. Right. They, yeah. They, they were a long, long time ago here. Yeah. Of course, and a down from us here. So I'll just wander over and just show you briefly Club Naval. So another Lido area. It's hot and popular today. Absolutely, look at that. We popped in there just the other day. And so although it's, um, they charge you to go in, you can go down and use the, the little restaurant down there. You can use that. Mm -hmm. But also it's free entry, I think from, from 12 o'clock to about three. And then from six in the evening till eight is when it shuts. But then it gets really quite popular then because you can just wander in, you can take a swim. And then as you can see, there's a little restaurant down there. And that's a really nice place to just hang out. Mm -hmm. Really inexpensive for all sort of local prices. Um, lovely atmosphere. And of course you've got that fantastic view which goes the view right is just across the bay. 
never stop here. Absolutely. Something different to look at. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of, in a way, that kind of sums up Madeira, isn't it? Really? There's always something to look at. And I swear, 12 months out of the year, you're going to find something that's in bloom everywhere. Absolutely. You come here now, you come here in winter time, you're going to see something different. Mm -hmm. So look, it's been great chatting with you, Alan. Um, it has, thank you. So where can people find you? Obviously, you've got the YouTube channel. Sure. Well, we have a YouTube channel. It's a, um, called, it'll be fun and yeah, featuring fun. myself, my wife, Leslie, and our son, Wolf, and Greer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and uh, we have lots of videos about lots of different things and be happy for you to visit sometime. So please do, go and have a look, go and check the videos out. If you watch one, you're probably going to end up watching all of them, just as we did. And um, I think we might have to just go and get a cup of coffee or something, shall we? Sounds yeah. wonderful. Sounds I wonderful. I think we can find somewhere.